don't blink. Blink and you're dead. Don't turn your back, don't look away, and don't blink. Good luck. Hey everyone, so as I'm sure you could tell by the introduction there, I'm talking about another Doctor Who episode, and uh, this is Blink. Now, I am actually quite excited to do this video. If you've seen some of my, my Series 2 episode reviews and things, you'll know that the episodes which aren't heavily involved in the Doctor, I'm not a massive fan of, but there's something about Blink which I really, really love. Now, this first aired on the 9th of June 2007, so that's, that's, that's barely, you know, that's barely even, even four years ago. Okay, it seems like quite a long time ago, doesn't it? And I will be honest, when I first saw this, I loved it. Sometimes it'll take me a while to warm to certain Doctor Who episodes, or at least in Series 3 it did, because Series 3 is my least favourite. But this one is not only my favourite from Series 3, or one of them, but one of my all-time favourite Doctor Who episodes. Now, for those of you who can't remember, or just to, just to recap, this episode focuses on Sally Sparrow, who is played by the absolute brilliant Carrie Mulligan before she cut her hair short. I liked her hair longer than I did short. And she finds all these messages on DVDs and the Easter egg messages as well from a man called the Doctor. First of all, they're just telling her not to blink, and there's messages on the walls indicating the same thing, and duck, and things like that. And then she finds the Easter egg. And on this Easter egg, it's the Doctor talking to her. But how can the Doctor be talking to her? Because how is he going to know what she's going to say next? And there's this whole thing about how the angels have the phone box. On that note, I just want to show you these as well while I'm talking. So she finds the the messages, and she finds a new message from the Doctor, which goes on about the angels, and how she's not allowed to blink. And at first she doesn't really know what he's on about, but then she sees them. The stone angels, the weeping angels, and obviously they're the most terrifying things ever. So before I get in with this, I have two badges. The first one says, the angels have the phone box, which I absolutely love. I think that's brilliant. And then the second one says, keep calm and don't blink. I'm a massive fan of the keep calm and carry on series, like the the mock badges with the little TARDIS. So yeah, I absolutely love this episode enough that I went and bought badges. And she sees the Weeping Angels and they are the most terrifying things in the world. They, they, there's, there's a thing about stone statues, you'll find it in a lot of movies. It's the, the gargoyles in Harry Potter are the same, they're stone but they come to life. You walk past old houses with like, the lion statues on the top of the gates and you think they're going to jump up and eat you. And these, these Weeping Angels are obviously they're like this. I can't see what I'm doing so I don't know if I'm doing it right. But you know they're like this because they can't they can't look at anything they can't look at each other because as soon as soon as somebody blinks they will attack you but as soon as they see each other they will turn to stone if you blink that angel will eat you basically it will kill you it will really ruin your life and the doctor's like you've got to you got to find a way to stop them and okay this is a big spoiler here really big spoiler if you haven't seen the episode i loved how they did that when they got the tardis and the tardis was there and the angels were around it, and as soon as the TARDIS materialised, the angels were staring at each other. And of course, because they've looked at each other, they've obviously turned each other to stone. So that was really, really clever. I, I did not see that coming. And even every time I watch it, I sit and go, oh, wow, that was a really amazing thing to do. I didn't see that coming, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. Because it's just, I just, I maybe mean, I've got a really simple, basic, easy to please mind. But I really thought that was really quite intelligent and quite a clever way to go about it. I didn't think they were going to do that. I often wondered why they didn't just get something and smash the angels to pieces or something, but they'd probably kick up a big fuss if you smash one of them. But I absolutely love the concept. You also have the whole, the whole travelling in time concept with the letters and things, and it's kind of... I think it's unnecessary padding. I know some of you like that aspect with her friend and things. Um, but for me, it's not a massive thing. The massive thing about this is the messages on the DVDs and trying to understand how the Doctor was trapped in 1969 because the angels have the phone box, what on earth is he going to do? She's got to get the key, she's got to get inside the phone box, she's got to do all these different things. It's really complicated, really confusing for her. But she manages it. She manages it for her friend, she manages it for love, she manages it for her safe of her own life. And I think she manages it because anybody would fall weak at the knees to David Tennant. If David Tennant told me to go and defend off a whole fleet of weeping angels for him, I wouldn't second thought it. I would do it straight away. Not that I'm inviting him to try and get me to do weird things so well, maybe I am I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that one I thought I'm, I'm starting to digress down a totally different path just now which I'm not gonna talk about I also love to do the bit where it's like the wibbly wobbly tiny wimey yeah that kind of got away from me I love it on YouTube and I'm gonna probably post this as a video response to it just now I think 
there is the Easter egg. Somebody has uploaded David's version of the Easter egg. And you can actually get the transcript online. I don't know if the transcript is in the video or not. But what I'm going to do at some point is I'm going to record my my response to the Easter egg. You know, me playing the part of Sally and doing that. I've wanted to do it for ages, but I've never got round to it. I'm going to learn the transcript because I don't want to. I don't want to read off of it. I want it to be really free and spontaneous. You know, like generally acting is. You know. So the Easter egg is actually on YouTube. I'll post this as a response. But in case they don't accept the video response, I will post the link to the, the the Easter egg in the below bar as well. So if any of you fancy doing that, if you fancy giving your responses to the Easter egg, um, please feel free to send me the links. Not in a shared link because I don't check those because there's like, loads of them, but in a message, um, let me know. And I will I will happily watch your Easter eggs and I will do mine as soon as as well. But yeah, as I said, this is just one of my all-time favourite Doctor Who episodes. The Weeping Angels, when they came back in series five when they came back in series five i i didn't care but as a one-off creature i really liked them and i thought they were really good really intelligent creatures just because they work so well yet they're so easy defeated all you have to do is look at them and they turn to stone it's it's so simple but it's so oh i, I want to know what they look like when they're i mean i kind of know i know what they look like when they're not stone angels but you know i'd like to be able to see them all together as not stone angels and things yeah, but please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts on this. And also let me know if you actually prefer, if you like the being in Series 5. I don't, I was, I made my peace with them in Series 3, I like that, but never mind. Um, yeah, but please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts on this. And that's it for just now, and I'll see you next time. Bye!